Imagine arriving in a foreign country and needing to navigate the train system to get from the airport to your hotel. Wouldn't it be incredible if the train schedule could switch to your native language so you could simply read and find out when the next train arrives instead of looking for someone who can translate the schedule for you? Sounds too good to be true, but this could be a very real possibility in the future thanks to the use of eye tracking in linguistic research. An eye tracker measures eye positions and movements using an eye tracking device. Researchers determine where a person is looking and infer what mental processes might be taking place based on the position and movements of the eye. An eye tracker uses near-infrared light to create a pattern of light on the eye and high-definition cameras to take images of the eye and the patterns created on it. Algorithms are then used to find details in a person's eye and patterns of images on the eye. From this, eye position and gaze point are calculated based on algorithms, and then eye tracking maps are generated. Different eye tracking maps, as seen below, are then used to infer information about mental processing. Eye tracking research began in 1879 when Louis-Emile Javel discovered through naked eye observations that readers' eyes don't skim across a page in a fluid motion while reading. Reading is actually made up of quick movements, or saccades, and short pauses, or fixations. The first eye tracker was used by Edmund Huey in 1908. He used this eye tracker to track the eye movement of people while they read text. This eye tracker was invasive, unlike most modern eye trackers, and required the wearer to wear a contact lens that had an opening for the pupil and was attached to a pointer that changed position with the wearer's eye movements. Today, eye trackers are much less invasive. Often they are simply attached to the computer that presents steady stimuli to the participants, as seen in this picture here. Eye trackers are also used in many different areas of research to infer mental processes of study participants. In linguistics, eye trackers are commonly used in studies investigating first and second language sentence processing during reading and the relationship between spoken language comprehension and the perception of visual stimuli. The most common eye movement measures recorded during reading are first fixation duration, the duration in milliseconds of the first fixation on a word during the first pass through text, gaze duration, the sum of all consecutive fixations on a word before leaving the region of interest, probability of skipping, the mean probability across participants that a word is skipped during reading, probability of making a single fixation, the mean probability across participants that a word will be fixated on only once, probability of making a refixation, the mean probability across participants that a word will be fixated on exactly twice, and total viewing time, the sum of gaze duration and fixation time of all regressions made to the critical region. Looking at these measures can help us understand perception across different tasks as seen in this table. Levy Schoen, 1981, calculated the mean fixation duration during different tasks. This research demonstrated that something is perceptually different between reading silently and reading silently while listening to a voice reading the same text. The mean fixation durations during the oral reading condition were longer, and when the eyes got ahead of the voice, they tended to fixate longer in an attempt to not get too far ahead of the voice reading the same text aloud. Eye tracking is also used in basic developmental psychology research. It's used to determine if an infant can distinguish between visual stimuli when they are presented with the stimulus simultaneously. If the child looks at one stimulus more, we can infer that they can discriminate between the two stimuli. This is a preferential looking paradigm. Researchers are looking at incorporating eye tracking methods into signs and billboards. How about a street sign that can detect when someone is looking at it and cleverly switches the message it presents when it knows someone is watching? Or an eye tracking sign that can switch to your native language based on normal fixation patterns, meaning reading languages you understand versus languages you don't understand. There are several advantages to using an eye tracker. An eye tracker has good ecological validity. It measures a participant's normal eye fixations as they look at a stimulus. The participant is able to revisit previously viewed stimuli without interruption. 
It's useful for understanding sentence processing. It's useful for word naming and lexical decision-making studies. It allows researchers to address subtle questions about comprehension. And modern eye trackers are less invasive and several are built into the stimuli display. An eye tracker does have some disadvantages. Participants may be susceptible to participant reactivity as it's difficult to hide an eye tracker. Participant reactivity may affect internal validity. It's difficult to calibrate the eye tracker. This can be time consuming and may not even be possible with special populations in children. Older eye tracker models are uncomfortable and involve the participant staying in one position for an extended period of time. And some are very expensive, upwards of 10,000 or more dollars.